What's going on? I'm Neon Mushroom. How are you doing? Don't answer that. I can't actually hear you. But if you're in the modern Magic the Gathering paper gameplay, check this out. That's what we're doing today. The deck we're playing is Indomitable Creativity, specifically five color creativity. If you don't know how that deck works, say you're new to the modern format, check out this video. It's going to be up there. It's going to be down in the description below as well. It's kind of a primer for the deck itself that you can watch before watching this video to get some context if you're newer. This video is also part of a series. So there's a video before this in the playlist. If you're watching this video in a playlist, if not, it'll be at the end of the video. Yeah. Yada, yada, you'll be able to find it everywhere, but that's round one of this event. We're currently 1-0. and oh. We beat Blue Red Murktide last round. In this round, we're playing against Jacob Morley, who is playing a five-color Omnath Bring the Light deck, and he's playing 80 cards, even though Yorion's banned in the format because he's a bit of a hipster. That's everything you need to know before getting into today's gameplay video, so... Game number one! Begin! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We win the die roll, and both Morley and I are keeping hands of seven cards. Ours includes Bloodstained Mire, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Spell Pierce, Scalding Tarn, Renin Six, Prismatic Ending, and Indomitable Creativity. This hand has everything we could possibly want, easy keep. Turn one, I'll lead on Scalding Tarn and pass the turn. Jake's gonna play Wooded Foothills and try to pass. By the end of his turn, I'll fetch dropping to 19 for a Jetmere's Garden, and then Jake's also gonna fetch to 19 to save time for a Savai Triumph. I'll drop Bloodstained Mire and then crack it to grab a Steam Vents and shock that into play, dropping to 16. Then I'll play Renin 6, tick it up to grab a Tarn from my graveyard, and pass the turn. Jake shocks in Breeding Pool, dropping to 17, casts Valky, triggers the Valky, sees that I have no creatures in hand, and passes the turn. I'm gonna draw, and I happen to draw an Archon, which is hilarious, so I show Jake, and then I tick up Renin 6 to get back Bloodstained Mire. I play Bloodstained Mire, fetch to 15 for a Mountain, play Fable of the Mirror Breaker, trigger the Fable, get a Goblin, and pass. Jake's gonna shock in Stopping Ground, dropping to 15, cast Tefiri Time Raveler, minus the Tef on the Goblin to draw card, he'll attack Renin 6 for 2 with the Valky, and pass the turn. In my first main phase, I'll trigger Chapter 2 of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, I'll pitch an Archon and a Spell Pierce to draw 2 extra cards. Then I'll play Scalding Tarn as my land for turn, fetch, drop to 14 for a Dwarven Mine, Dwarven Mine triggers and I make a Dwarf, and then I'm gonna cast Creativity, targeting the Dwarf. In response, Jake's gonna pitch Kitchen Finks to evoke Solitude and exile my Dwarf, bringing me up to 15. Then I'll minus my Renin 6 to kill the Valky, and pass the turn, where Jake just ticks up to Fury, plays Flooded Strand, and passes back. On my first main phase, we're gonna trigger Chapter 3 of Fable, so it flips into Reflections of Kiki Jiki. Then I'll take up Renin 6 to get back Scalding Tarn, I'll play the Scalding Tarn, I'll fetch to 14 for another Dwarven Mine, make another Dwarf, and then I'll Creativity for 2, targeting Reflections and the Dwarf. In response, Jake's gonna Abrupt Decay the Reflections, so that destroys it, then Creativity resolves for 1. So we get 1 Archon, which triggers, I'll go up to 17, Jake goes down to 12, Jake sacks to Fury and discards Eldritch Evolution. I'll draw a card. At the end of turn, Jake's gonna fetch to 11 for Endotha Triumph. Jake then plays to Fury Time Raveler, takes it down to bounce the Archon, and he draws a card. Then I'll play Utopia Sprawl on the Endotha Triome, naming blue, and pass back. I'll minus my Renin 6 to kill his Tefiri, play a Scalding Tarn, and pass back to him, where he drops Omnath, triggers the Omnath to draw a card, and then plays Flooded Strand. This is going to trigger Omnath's first landfall ability, so he gains 4 going up to 15. Then I'll fetch down to 14 for a tap Steam Vents, which triggers Omnath's second landfall ability, and generates 1 white, 1 blue, 1 red, and 1 green. He'll use the red and green to play Renin 6, but in response I'll Spell Pierce the Renin 6. He has the floating mana, so he pays for it, and then he ticks up his Renin 6 to buy back Flooded Strand. He tries to pass, but at the end of turn I fetch to 16 for Xander's Lounge. I'll tick up Renin 6 to buy back Scalding Tarn, and then play it. Then I'll cast Prismatic Ending for 4, targeting the Omnath, which exiles it, and I'll pass to Jake, who casts another Omnath, draws off the Omnath ETB trigger, plays Flooded Strand, triggers Omnath's first landfall ability, and gains 4 going up to 18, then he ticks up his Ren to get back Flooded Strand, and he tries to pass the turn. At the end of his turn, I fetch to 15 for Dwarven Mine, get a Dwarf, and then Jake fetches to 17 for a Plains to get blue, white, red, and green off the Omnath and cast Solitude to exile the Dwarf, bringing me up to 16. I'll tick up the Renin 6 to get back and play my Scalding Tarn, and I'll fetch to 13 for a Blood Crypt, which I will shock in, dropping to 11, then I'll tap 8 mana and hard cast Archon. This resolves, so it triggers, I go to 16, and Jake goes to 14, Jake sacks Renin 6 and discards a land, and I draw a card. At the end of turn, Jake's gonna cast Leyline Binding targeting my Archon so it gets exiled, and we go to Jake's turn, where he attacks me for 3 with Solitude and gains 3. I go to 13, he goes to 17, and then he kills Renin 6 with Omnath. He plays an Island, triggers the Omnath, gains 4, goes to 21, and passes. I'll hardcast another Archon. It's going to trigger, so I'll go to 16, and Jake goes to 18. Jake sacrifices Solitude and can't discard because he's Hellbent, and I draw a card. I'll shock in Sacred Foundry, dropping to 14, and pass. In Jake's draw step, after he draws, I'm going to cast Leyline Binding, targeting Jake's Binding that's on my Archon. That would mean my Archon would come into play and trigger, meaning Jake would have to discard the last card in his hand, meaning that he is very much dead on board, he concedes, and we go to game two. Going into game two, our 
sideboard plan is very similar to how we would side for the four color elementals matchup. If you don't know how to side for that matchup, you probably aren't in the discord with all my sideboard guides, meaning you're not a patron. If you want to change that, check the description below. We're going to side out three copies of spell pierce, and that's because this matchup goes quite long. We often find ourselves in positions where our opponent can easily pay for the spell pierce. We're also cutting four copies of lightning bolt. The card simply doesn't do enough in the matchup, it doesn't kill most of Jake's most potent threats, and the threats that it does kill happen to be elementals who already do their job once they enter the battlefield. To replace the seven cards that we just cut, we're going to start by adding in a full playset of Change the Equation. Change the Equation is going to be an incredibly potent permission spell in this matchup, the only spell that it doesn't counter that we care about is going to be three mana Teferi. We'll also bring in two copies of Veal of Summer. This is a concession to the fact that he probably has Onward Ego in his sideboard, and our deck is not going to work very well if he's able to strip all of the Archon of cruelties out of our deck. Finally, we'll bring in a Besiju who endures, as this is a Leyline Binding Mirror Match, and if we can use Besiju's channel ability to remove one of his bindings, and then use Renin 6 to start to loop the Besiju, we can actually strip mine all of Jake's mana producing lands. We have another 7 card keep for game 2, and it has Veal of Summer, Arid Mesa, Expressive Iteration, Scalding Tarn, a Mountain, Tefiri, and Change the Equation. The hand is great, there's no creativity, but we've got a ton of interaction, which is fine because this game will probably go very long. Jake's on the play with a mulligan to 6, so he'll start on Wooded Foothills and pass the turn. I'll play Arid Mesa and try to pass, but at the end of my turn, Jake will fetch to 19 for Savai Triome. Then he'll shock in Breeding Pool, dropping to 17, and tap out for a Wall of Omens. It enters the battlefield and triggers, so he draws a card and tries to pass, but at the end of his turn, I'll drop to 19 by fetching for a Jetmere's Garden. I'll play Scalding Tarn and pass back, so Jake plays Windswept Heath, fetches to 16 for a Forest, and casts Ren and Realmbreaker. In response, I'll fetch to 18 for a Steam Vents and shock that into play going to 16 to cast Change the Equation and counter the Ren. Then he'll pass, so I'll play a Mountain and pass right back. Jake plays Tefiri Time Raveler and then drops a Steam Vents tapped. He'll minus the Tefiri on his Wall of Omens to bounce it to his hand and draw a card. He'll pass to me, where I'll play Arid Mesa, fetch to 15 for an on tap Sacred Foundry, shocking down to 13, and I'll cast Leyline Binding, targeting Tefiri, and pass. Jake casts Renin 6 and takes it up to get Windswept Heath back from his graveyard, and he plays it. Then I'll play Wall of Omens, triggering it once again to draw a card and try to pass. But at the end of his turn, I'll cast Leyline Binding, targeting the Renin 6 to exile it. Then I'll play a Teferi, I'll minus it targeting nothing to draw a card, I'll play Stomping Ground tapped and try to pass, but at the end of my turn, Jake's gonna fetch going to 15, but then decides he doesn't want to, and we forget to switch to life totals back, so for the rest of the game he's gonna be at a life total that's not quite correct, sorry. Jake starts his turn with an Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Wall of Omens. He'll tutor up an Omnath and put it into play, and then it'll have the ETB trigger so he draws a card. Then he'll play Windswept Heath, trigger the Omnath's first landfall ability, gain 4 going up to 19, and then fetch down to 18 for an overgrown tomb, shock into play, dropping to 16, which triggers Omnath's second landfall ability, and he gets white, blue, red, green. He'll fetch again to 15 for a Temple Garden, shocked, dropping to 13, and trigger Omnath's third landfall ability to deal 4 damage to me and my Tefiri, killing it and dropping me to 9. Jake then casts Bring the Light for all 5 colors and gets Onward Ego and casts it. In response, I'll cast Veal of Summer to get Hexproof and draw a card, so he can't target me with the Onward Ego. Jake will then pass the turn. I'll start with an Expressive Iteration, and I'll exile a Dwarven Mine and add Prismatic Ending to my hand, and I'll put a land on the bottom. Then I'll play the Dwarven Mine, trigger the Dwarven Mine to get a Dwarf, and cast Creativity targeting the Dwarf. In response, Jake's gonna Leyline Binding my Dwarf, fizzling my Creativity, so I'll pass. Jake's gonna attack for 4 with Omnath, dropping me to 5, and then cycle Spara's Headquarters to draw a card. He'll cast Eternal Witness, trigger the Witness to get back Windswept Heath, and play it, triggering the Omnath Landfall to gain 4, going to 17, and pass to me. We're all shock in a blood crypt, dropping down to three. I'll prismatic ending the Omnath and pass. Jake heads straight into combat and attacks me with Eternal Witness, but in response, I'll cast Leyline Binding, targeting the Witness. Then Jake's gonna cast Omnath number three, trigger it, draw a card. He plays a fetch land, and thanks to the Oncracked fetch already in play, he can get all three landfall triggers, which kills me. We lose game two, we're going to game three. We have no sideboard changes going into game three, and we're both on a mulligan to six with me on the play. My first mulligan is Tefiri Time Raveler, another Tefiri Time Raveler, Prismatic Ending, Leyline Binding, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Change the Equation, and Dwarven Mine. This hand's all gas, but that's because the only land in our hand is the mine. We cannot keep that. We are keeping our six card hand, which has Ren and Six, Scalding Tarn, Arid Mesa, Jetmere's Garden, Archon of Cruelty, Steam Vents, and we're shipping a Dwarven Mine to the bottom. This hand is pretty land heavy, but we have a Triome in hand, which we can loop by cycling it and picking it up with Renin 6, which is a solid place to be in a grindy matchup like this one. 
turn one, I'll start with Scalding Tarn and pass, where Jake plays a tap Sacred Foundry and tries to pass back to me, but at the end of his turn, I'll fetch dropping to 19 for a Xander's Lounge. Then I'll play Arid Mesa, fetch, and shock dropping to 16 for a Stomping Ground, and play Ren and 6. I'll plus the Ren to get back my Mesa and pass back, where Jake shocks in Breeding Pool dropping to 18 and passes to me. I'll plus Ren and 6 to get back Scalding Tarn, play the Tarn, fetch to 15 for a Mountain, and cast Fable of the Mirror Breaker. In response, Jake's going to cast Dovin's Veto, targeting the Fable, countering it, so I'll pass to Jake where he plays an island and passes back. I'll tick up Ren to get back my turn, I'll play the turn and try to pass. At the end of turn, Jake's gonna binding my Ren and six, exiling it, and then I'll untap and play a Plains. He'll try to pass, but at the end of turn, I'll cycle Jetmir's Garden to draw a card. Then I'll play Arid Mesa and pass the turn to Jake, but at the end of my turn, he'll cast Eldamri's Call to tutor up a Solitude to his hand. Then I'll untap, shock and Esteem Vents dropping to 16, and ship the turn to me. I'll cast Expressive Iteration, and I'll exile Leyline Binding to it, and put Change the Equation in my hand. Then I'll fetch and shock, dropping to 12 for a Sacred Foundry, and I'll cast Leyline Binding on Jake's Binding that's on my Renin 6 to get my Renin 6 back. I'll plus the Renin 6 to get back the Jetmir's Garden, I'll shock and Steam Vents dropping to 10 and try to pass. But at the end of turn, Jake's gonna flash in Solitude and target nothing. Jake's then gonna attack Renin 6 for three with Solitude, but in response, I'll fetch to nine for a Dwarven Mine and make a Dwarf. I'll block the Solitude, but Jake's gonna gain three thanks to Lifelink and go up to 19. Then Jake's gonna cast Bring to Light. In response, I cast Change the Equation to counter it, then we go to my turn. I'll play Bloodstained Mire, fetch to eight for a Dwarven Mine and make a token. I'll Creativity the token, get an Archon, the Archon's going to resolve, and I'll go to 11, Jake's gonna drop to 16, Jake's gonna sacrifice Solitude and discard Abrupt Decay, I'll draw a card. Then I cycle Jetmere's Garden to draw, I tick up the Renin Six to get back the Jetmere's Garden, and I'll pass. Jake casts Bring the Light for five colors, and this time he's gonna get Vindicate to kill the Archon and pass the turn to me. I'll shock in Blood Grip, dropping to nine, and hard cast an Archon. It triggers, I'll go up to 12, Jake's gonna drop down to 13, he has nothing to sack, so we just discard Savai Triome, and I draw a card. I tick up Ren with zero targets, as I already have seven cards in my hand, and I pass the turn to Jake, who plays Omnath, triggers the Omnath to draw a card, and passes back to me. So I'll head straight for combat, attack with Archon, which triggers the Archon, I'll gain three going up to 15, Jake takes three dropping to 10, and then he's gonna sack the Omnath and discard a Fury, and I'll draw a card. Then Jake takes six from the Archon's combat damage, dropping to four. Then in my second main phase, I'll minus Ren and six, targeting Jake for one damage, dropping into three. Then I'll cast Indomitable Creativity for one, targeting the Archon. Creativity flips us into another Archon who enters the battlefield and triggers. Jake is at three, so that kills him, meaning we win this game two and one, putting us at a 2-0 record currently for this event. Thank you.